a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in Exploring ETFs. Hi everyone, welcome to Exploring ETFs. I'm Neena Mishra and today we are talking about low volatility ETFs, now, volatility and minimum volatility is back in focus because of continued market turbulence. Uh, and we have talked about uh, these ETFs in past uh, videos as well. And today I wanted to specifically look whether they uh, did what they're supposed to do, whether they outperformed the broader indexes during this uh, period of uh, continued market uncertainty. So these ETFs hold up relatively well during market declines, but may underperform if uh, during periods of strong bull markets. So, so if you believe that the market is going to rebound from here, it is oversold, then maybe these ETFs will lag a little bit. But, uh, you know, we many experts now believe that uh, market conditions may remain challenging uh, because inflation remains very high. And global central banks, banks, central banks all over the world, they are tightening monetary policies very aggressively after many years of very accommodative monetary policies and economic growth all over the world is slowing down significantly. So we could see continued market turbulence and low equity equity returns in the coming months. So there's a case for you know considering, considering these ETFs. Uh, so we will take a look at three very popular ETFs in the space with different methodologies and from three different providers. So the first one we are highlighting is by iShares. Uh, iShares minimum volatility factor ETF, ticker symbol is USMV. This is the most popular product in the space so with over 27 billion in assets and uh, charges and is attractively priced at 15 basis points. So it tries to construct a portfolio which overall has a lower volatility compared to the relative broader market. So in addition to you know volatility of individual stocks, it also considers correlations between those stocks to arrive at a minimum volatility portfolio. So if you want to learn more about this ETF, you can go to the code page on sax.com. You can read our research reports, report articles. In fact, I did a podcast with BlackRock. Uh, you can listen to that podcast and BlackRock believes this a case for holding these uh, minimum volatility ETFs in your core portfolio over the long term. So you can listen to that and their rationale. Then using the link, you can go to the external web page of uh, iShares web page for the CTF. So this shows you uh, what exactly it tries to do. So basically, equities, the portfolio in the aggregate has lower volatility relative to the broader market, you can look at uh, the holdings, so Vertex Pharma, Republic Services, Waste Management, those boring companies are the top holdings in the portfolio. But this has significant exposure to information technology as well. And then healthcare and consumer staples, industrial uti industrials, utilities, etc. The second one that I'm highlighting is uh, by Invesco. It is uh, the Invesco S&P Low Volatility ETF, the ticker symbol is SPLV. Uh, so this uh, follows a simple methodology of uh, least volatile S&P 500 stocks. So as the name suggests, 100 stocks. This is 10 billion in the portfolio and has an expense ratio of 25 basis points. Again, to learn more, you can go to the code page. It has a nice dividend yield too of 2.13%. You can go to Invesco webpage for the CTF. Uh, so uh, 100 securities from the S&P 500 index with the lowest realized volatility over the past 12 months. Look at the portfolio. 
and this is more tilted towards defensive areas of the market which have performed better so you will see the difference in the performance of these uh, etfs so utilities has almost 28 percent of the portfolio then consumer staples and healthcare looking at the top holdings uh, johnson and johnson pepsico these are the top holdings in the portfolio the third one that i'm highlighting is by state street spider ssga us large cap low volatility index etf uh, this uh, selects stocks from the broader russell 1000 uh, index selects 148 least volatile stocks and then it looks it applies liquidities uh, screens as well 569 million is in assets uh, this is the newest and cheapest of the three 12 basis points in expense ratio so let's go to the code page on zax.com lglv is the ticker you can go to state street web page for the ctf so Mm, subset of uh, largest 1000 US stocks and then uh, it uses uh, a process to stocks with the least lowest volatility subject to certain liquidity constraints. Looking at the holdings, uh, PepsiCo, Hershey, Kimberly, Clark, these are the top holdings in the ETF and industrials, information technology, uh, industrials, financials, information technology, utilities, and consumer discretionary. These are the top sectors in terms of exposure. On this slide, I have the comparative performance versus the S&P 500 index. And you will see that uh, these ETFs have done what they are supposed to do. They all three have outperformed the broader S&P 500 index, which is down about 16% over the past year. The Invesco product has performed the best. It is down just about 1%, and that is mainly because of a lot of exposure to those defensive areas of the market, as we saw. And then the State Street product, which is down about 5 6%. The iShares product is down about 10% and the S&P 500 index is down about 16% over the past year. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out zax.com slash promo for an interesting offer and also make sure to subscribe to our videos so that you do not miss anything and I will see you next week.